Good morning. Welcome to Saturday, the 30th. Can you believe we're at the 30th of March? <laughs> Tomorrow is the last day of March. I want to welcome you uh, <clears throat> to the podcast today and to the um, uh, to the live and to Facebook, to uh, YouTube, all the channels. Um, I want to thank you for joining me. Uh, I, I never take it for granted. Um, I do want you to go. Uh, I would like you to go. I'm not going to force you, but I would like you to go to um, uh, Tom and Sarah on YouTube. Uh, my podcast, Tom and Sarah, Abounding Hope, Encountering God. Um, and, and, and subscribe to those channels. Like, comment, and share those channels. Um, that's a way that you can help um, in this ministry and what we can do and what we're trying to do. So I want to thank you in advance for doing that. If you want to get a hold of me, Tom and Sarah at Outlook.com, that's how to do it. And, um, yeah, and then we will do it. Now I'm hoping that my <laughs> that my cell phone doesn't fly off my holder here. <laughs> I'm hoping. It's a hope. Um, like it did yesterday. That was pretty funny. Um, today I'm going to be sharing, um, just my testimony, how I came to Jesus. Uh, starting on Monday, we're going to go ahead and, and, and start doing another book. Uh, probably the book of James or Jacob, however you want to do it. But, um, I want to talk to you about my testimony. Um, when I was growing up, I was a little um, um, out of it. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't the top guy. I wasn't uh, uh, the one that everybody would listen to. I was the one that everybody would kind of belittle and stuff like that, especially in school. Um, and I was kind of on my own. I, I, you know, tried out for different sports, football. Um, I remember. Um, that I was, uh, <laughs> I don't know, I was really fast. And, uh, and so they put me a wide receiver. I would be, um, I was skinny. So I was able to get in between, uh, the, the blockers pretty quickly. And, um, and then so they put me at nose tackle. I just thought that was hilarious. But anyway, uh, so I would get in tough situations, uh, virtually my entire life. I felt that, um, you know, I had to excel in order to be noticed. Now, um, my mom and dad, they were very loving, uh, with a typical Italian family. Um, <clears throat> but I just was kind of like awkward. I guess that would be the best way to say it. I, socially, I was awkward. I was very introverted. Um, so school was not the easiest thing for me. I wouldn't read. Uh, I couldn't, well, I could read words, but to comprehend what I was reading was really difficult. So when we had English class and we had to read books, it was very hard for me. I couldn't, um, uh, I would have to read a page, paragraph, you know, four or five times in order to start to understand it. Uh, so it was very frustrating for me. Um, so <clears throat> I went through life and, and I was born and raised. Uh, I was born in Newark, New Jersey, raised in nearby. And, um, and, and again, you know, the family was really cool. We had, you know, we lived right next door to a car wash, which I eventually later on in life started working at. Um, and then we moved around the corner, uh, to another place and, you know, it started developing friendships, had friendships for many, many years, uh, in South Orange. It was really a tremendous, a tremendous place right by the university. Things have changed quite a bit since then. Um, in 2019, I, I moved out of New Jersey in uh, 1983, and I went back in 2019 and visited a friend of mine uh, who I had been friends with for about 50 years. And, uh, you know, he's he and his wife um, really, really took me under their um uh, under their wing, they, they took me as part of their family. They made me part of their family in a good way. And, uh, and so I, I, I really wanted to honor them and to, uh, bless them. So 
uh, you know, I went down there and uh, I went to a pizzeria that I had last seen in 1983. And the owner was still there. He apparently he had just rebought, um, or not rebought, but re. Um, uh, good morning, Patricia. So good to see you. Um, well, actually, you're seeing me, but I see your picture. So <laughs> uh, it's beautiful. <laughs> anyway, the um, so um, you know, I went there for some pizza. I had uh, uh, also gone to uh, the. Um, the, 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 the bagel shop that was nearby. And uh, it was called Sonny's Bagels. And, uh, and, and Sonny was there and, and he remembered me. And the Lord, uh, I remember I went in to buy some bagels and black and white cookies. And if you've never had a black and white cookie, you desperately need to have a black and white cookie. Those are just delicious. And, um, so I bought some of those and I bought some bagels. And, uh, and this woman walks into the store. And, uh, and the Lord told me to buy her whatever she wants. And then so, uh, Sonny asked me, is there anything else? And I said, and I turned around and I said, yeah, whatever she wants. And I pointed back to her and she, uh, she was kind of shocked, you know, and she didn't really know what to do. And, and I'm telling you this story because it's important to understand that sometimes we don't know what to do when somebody's being good to us. Uh, like when, when some, like God, when he, he is good to us, we don't know how to react sometimes. Just remember that your receiving a gift is a blessing, not only from the contributor, but also for the contributor. They get to be blessed as well. Um, so, uh, so anyway, she was blessed and, and Sonny kind of looked up like nobody ever does this. And I'm like, well, you know, God told me to, and I, I, I told her, you know, this is a gift from Jesus, and she started to cry. Uh, she had very little, but um, God was able to bless her in that. So anyway, I go back into, into New Jersey, and I had some friends in Jersey. Um, I'm not going to mention their names for their uh, protection, but um, I don't know what they would need protection from, but they were just really good friends. And so um, my brother had given me a, a chick track. I don't know if you remember Jack. Actually, it's funny, but the guy's name was Jack Chick, and he would have these uh, animated, not animated, but cartoon-like tracks that you would give to people. And my brother gave me one, um, you know, th that was early in the year of 1973. Uh, it was right after, actually, in January of 1973, when I was born again, that... Um, that I was watching Billy Graham on TV and I had no idea who this guy was. Um, but he had talked about without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. There's no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. So with that in mind, I went ahead and, uh, and, you know, prayed the prayer with him. And I don't remember the message. I remember the verse. It was Hebrews 9:22. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And he talked about how Jesus um, uh, shed his blood for us. And so I, I prayed and I wrote into the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. He sent me uh, Haley's Bible handbook and some literature, and 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 I read them. Um, which I just looked them over again. I couldn't read very well, and so um, and then so I went through, and I was very religious, but I became even more religious because that's what I understood the, um, uh, that's what I understood. I understood religion. And my brother hands me this track. It says, if, if you were to die, would you go to heaven? And so I, you know, I'm like, wow, um, do you believe in heaven? Do you believe you're going there? And so, um, and I started to think, and it's really funny, but, I would mention this story and people thought I was born again. And I'm like, you know, I, I had no idea what that meant. So um, <clears throat> I was very athletic as a kid and I would play softball. And and um, so I was invited by some friends to go play softball for this church that I eventually went to. And, um, and I had a mouth on me. Uh, a U.S. Marine sergeant had cleaner language than I did. And I'm playing third base and I'm yelling at these batters and, and, um, and all. And, you know, as I was playing and um, <laughs> I don't know, maybe everybody finally figured it out, but I wasn't born again. So uh, they had a testimony time at the end and uh, it was, it was beautiful. And so 
uh, hamburgers, hot dogs. I had a bunch of food and I was, I was happy. And, uh, and then they started to share testimonies and, um, how another friend of ours had died, uh, in a bicycle accident on a road in, in, in New Jersey, South Orange that, uh, um, that would go up to Livingston and there were these things called the S curves and they were pretty, pretty drastic. Anyway, truck ran him off the road and he impaled himself in a tree and he perished. And at the funeral, uh, everybody was worshiping the Lord. So this testimony is going on. Uh, and, and, and so, um, they were telling me about the testimony of how they just worshiped God at his funeral. And I was like, wow. So <clears throat> eventually the pastor got up and he, and he shared the gospel. He, he, he talked about giving your life to Jesus and how to be born again. And so, uh, they said, if anybody wants to be born again, raise your hand. And, and I, and I tried to sit on my hands because I wasn't sure. I thought I already was, but I give, apparently my hand went up and he came over and, and I looked at him and he go, he said, yeah, your hand was up. And I was like, Oh, okay. So he prayed for me and, um, and I gave my heart to Jesus and, I know how people talk about sometimes how they have this um, moment, uh, this this feeling that, uh, you know, like they were lighter than air. And, you know, like they were really, really light. They, um, everything was, to, and literally, I can tell you that happened to me. Every burden that I had had, uh, every um, pain that I had experienced was lifted at that moment. And, and I knew that I was born again. I knew I've given my heart to the Lord. Powerful. I, I didn't know what else to do. I was like, I was, wow, this is awesome. So on the way home, my brother told me, do not tell mom. Whatever you do, don't tell mom. So I got home and my mother noticed that I was happy. Now, for, for me, everything was a matter of fact up until then. And, um, and I didn't really know what to do. But um, I was very, very stoic, and um, my mother came up to me, and or my mother was sitting on the the, uh, the uh, uh, chair off into the corner of the room as I walked in, and I looked over at her, and she said, "What happened to you?" And I said, uh, "You know, I gave my heart to Jesus. I'm born again." And, and like literally, she had this face on her that was. You know, she was not really happy about it. Now, again, my family was very loving. We were, very, you know, we were a typical Italian family. We, we, you know, yelled at each other. And five minutes later, we were great friends again. And, and uh, my parents were very loving. My dad worked hard to make sure that we had enough. My mom, she was always nurturing. And so, um, but, but at this point, my mom was really not happy. She was not excited to say the least. And I said, mom, God can give you peace. And so it was really cool. God can give you peace. And so she understood, you know, and then all of a sudden she, she lightened up. And um, it wasn't until years later that she gave her heart to the Lord, my dad as well. Um, and then so I gave my heart to Jesus. I lived my life for Jesus. I remember uh, every day we would go out and into the park and we would do some worship times. On Friday nights, we would have a coffee house that we would go to and share the gospel with people, give them donuts and coffee. And, um, and then, so we would do that every Friday, every Saturday we had Bible studies. And, and, uh, and I told you uh, the last few days about mother Smith, Ma Smith, um, who would come to the Bible studies and she would pre or preach. She would share on the, on the book of Acts. And she would tell us about Azusa street. We had no idea what it was, but she would tell us about Azusa street and, and, um, and what they carried, you carry and, uh, and I remember those things. So, um, you know, and so we would do this. And so every day we had a Bible study. We went to Ma Reardon's house um, uh, some days. We had another Bible study at somebody else's house. And so all these houses every day during the summertime. Um, and then so I go to high school, you know, when I gave my heart to Jesus, everything in my life changed. Now, I didn't understand everything, but I did understand that God loved me. And uh, you know, and, and, and I went through, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of things. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit in, uh, January of 84. Um, you know, I was, uh, uh, I was baptized in June of 84, or sorry, 74, 
I got baptized in the Holy Spirit and I was uh, baptized in June. And I remember the day we got baptized, it was the middle of June, June 15th in New Jersey, usually is a pretty warm day. But this day was really cold and it was cold in that pool, but, uh, but we did it and, uh, and, and I was baptized. Um, and so I lived my life from August 4th, 1973 until today. And, uh, and again, the only book that I could read with any understanding was the Bible. Uh, any kind of, um, ease in, in trying to, uh, I shouldn't say understand as much as comprehending what it was trying to say. Um, spent, uh, time in prayer. I remember, uh, a man by the name of Leonard Ravenhill and, uh, and he preached a message one time and it said, and he said, uh, the devil gets up at sunrise, so you got to get up before sunrise and 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 seek the face of God. And and so we would have our uh, my friends and I we would get up before sunrise and we would pray and and read the word and sunrise would happen. Well, uh, and then we would be up all day usually. And you know how kids are and uh, teenagers and college people. We are um, we are uh, constantly awake uh, until like after midnight. And, uh, and I was, and, and I was, in, I was involved in music and, and of course, you know, that's when we get creative is late at night. So, um, you know, on very little sleep, we would get up and we would have our quote devotions. And, <laughs> and so I found out years later that he would go back to bed after he was finished preaching or after he was finished praying, he would go back to sleep. And so. For a while, I was upset at him. I'm like, you know, why didn't you tell us? But anyway, um, uh, it was it was rewarding time. It, it taught me how to read the Bible and to be in the Bible every day. And, you know, if you read um, four chapters a day, I think there's um, 1,189 chapters in the Bible. Um, and the middle chapter is Psalm 118. The middle verses of the Bible are Psalm 118, uh, 8 and 9. Better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. And so while I was not a drug addict, I wasn't a murderer. I didn't, you know, my testimony was that I was lonely. I was, um, I was really isolated and it was kind of self-inflicted, but it was still an isolation. And, um, and I felt more comfortable because I never made fun of me. <laughs> Everybody else did. Uh, it was slow for me to understand. Uh, like if somebody was talking, I had to uh, think about what they were saying to understand what they were trying to say. Um, and so the Lord has helped me with that. But uh, the deal was in 2015, I moved to Redding, California. I was, I was, you know, in 83, uh, I moved to Washington State. I actually arrived in Olympia, Washington on the uh, 12th of October or the 13th of October. I stayed in Tacoma, Washington on the 12th. And then uh, on the on the 15th, we moved down to Olympia. And then, um, so I was in Olympia, Washington from 83 uh, and then moved back and forth, went to Latvia for three years in the mid nineties. I went to um, Alaska these last three years. And so as a missionary, uh, it's something I always wanted to do. Um, and, and with that, I remember a story of a, a missionary that came to our church. I was born again in a Christian and Missionary Alliance church, A.W. Tozer, A.B. Simpson. And um, and we would always have missionaries once a year that would come. I went to Bible college in New Jersey, and we would have missionaries that would come. And one, one of these missionaries shared the story of a little boy in Portugal, and he um, and, and, and starfish would come up onto the beach. The, the, the starfish would be washed up on the waves. And, um, and, and this kid would take them and throw them back into the water. Um, and, and he would pick up one and throw it in the water. And this guy walks up to him and says, Hey kid, don't you realize that they're going to die anyway and they're going to get washed back up into the floor, uh, get, get washed up and you can't save all of them. And this kid looked at him and he goes, well, I can save this one. And he threw it back and I can save this one. And he threw it back into the ocean. And, um, and I remember, uh, being in New York city, um, in the eighties 
and I was a part of a ministry called Agape Force. And that um, gentleman that I was with, his name is Angelo, uh, we, were, we were on the FDR drive, and I remember looking up over the rise in the road, and you can see miles ahead of you, and there, uh, all three lanes of the northbound FDR drive were full. All three lanes of the southbound FDR drive were full. And I remember being overwhelmed, and I said, Lord, how am I going to reach all of these people? And, um, and I, I remember the Lord spoke to me one at a time, one at a time. You don't have to do everything, just one at a time. And so um, just would go out, we would witness. And I, I remember we went to this place called Manhattan Park. Uh, we saw a, um, a seller of heroin. Um, he would hide the needles under leaves in the park. Uh, we were able to get him out uh, and take him to Teen Challenge in Brooklyn. And um, and then we went back like the next week and he was back there. He, he, he got out. Now, Teen Challenge does not hold you there. But what they do is they go ahead and they, they try to minister to you. And if you can get through the kick, uh, you'll be really good. I look at Todd White and how he got out of Teen Challenge. Um, the deal for me was that in 2015, um, I mean, I, I would help out churches. I would start churches and, and uh, pastor churches and things like that, do worship leading. And, um, and I remember I was part of a church in Federal Way, Washington. And, uh, and then I remember in 2003, I was down in Iwako, Washington, actually. Um, and, uh, Iwako in Long Beach, Washington. And I was pastoring a church. And, um, and I went to a conference in LA at Cheon's church, Harvest Rock. And, um, uh, Bill, a pastor by the name of Bill Johnson was one of the speakers. Now, Teaching pastors to me were the most boring things I ever. I love the good evangelist. I love the good person with who can talk and keep me involved. Well, anyway, Bill Johnson was more of a matter of fact kind of guy. And as he was sharing the revelation that came out of his heart, out of his mind, uh, out of his spirit as he was preaching really struck me. And I was like, wow, you know, this guy, he's got, I mean, he spends time with Jesus. That's my cry when I die. I want at my funeral, I want somebody to say, this man spent time with Jesus. So I'm doing that now. And um, so I went up to him afterwards, and I remember he invited me um, to his uh, leadership conference. Um, the leadership conference was uh, at that time, Hi, Aya. Good to see you. Um, I remember at that time that um, I want to just mention here for Aya that she was my translator when I was in Latvia. And, um, you know, she tremendous, tremendous woman. And I trusted her with what I had to say. And so she helped me a lot. We went to a place, remember, Yakapils, and we would go to Yakapils. And that's where you were from. And um, anyway, so Pastor Bill, uh, you know, I went to his Leaders Advance Conference the following year. And uh, and, and I remember, uh, I said, man, I want to come back to this church. I want to come back here. Uh, he gave us a book called When Heaven Invades Earth. I read the book cover to cover. And, um, and you know, and it was still, it took me a while to read it all. But, um, you know, because I was having a hard time understanding and are comprehending the book. And then, so I would read that along with the, my Bible. And um, so I went back to my church that I was pastoring, and I said, hey, um, we're going to go after this stuff. We're going to go after this. We're going to go after revival. We're going to go after the, the signs and wonders and miracles of God. We're going to go after healing. And basically they said, no, we're not. And I, and then so after a little bit of arguing, I, I just told them, hey, listen, do you want me to still pastor here? Nobody answered. So I said, there, uh, you can have the keys. I, I don't need a building. And then so um, I ended up, uh, a Nazarene church got wind of what happened. They let us use their church on Saturday nights, which was perfect because it was a um, it was a tourist town anyway. And then so we were able to minister to a lot of people. Uh, we had our Sunday services at my house for a while. Then we eventually moved into the movie theater. They let us do it. Um, and then so 
And we had that. I, I became friends with a pastor by the name of uh, 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 Deskins, Pastor Deskins. Uh, he was such a great man. And we got to be really good friends and uh, in, in Raymond, Washington. And so, uh, and then from there, we moved back to Federal Way. And then I ended up uh, in 2015, my ex-wife, she said, uh, do you still want to move to Reading? And I said, absolutely. Uh, I still want to go there. And the next day, that was in January, the next day, I got a call from my sister. My dad was dying of cancer. My mom had passed away in 2007. She was born again. She had dementia and cancer. My, my dad, uh, you know, he went to an oncologist and they said, do you want to know how long you got? My dad said, no. Um, so shortly after I bought a ticket to go to New York to visit my dad, spent some time with him. I spent a couple weeks with him. Um, and, uh, you know, just kept praying for healing for him. Um, my dad ended up passing away and went to heaven in, uh, in April of that year. Um, and then so of 2015, I moved down to Reading in, uh, in, in May, May 15th is when I got here. And then on June 1st, I remember, um, and, and when you move to Reading, if you're a pastor or a worship leader and you move to Reading, you're not going to do much. Um, you don't need to preach because they have so many preachers here. You don't need to lead worship because the worship team is there. But <clears throat> I'm all by myself and I go, well, what do I do? And, uh, and the Lord said, let's just meet together. So I put on in over my head uh, from the album, uh, We Will Not Be Shaken, and also um, No Longer Slaves. And I put those two songs on in, in a loop, and I sat in my backyard. And I remember on June 1st, uh, there were five partridges, quail, I don't know what they were, but there were five of them that were sitting on the, the fence that was across from me. And um, And after the hour, they left, and I, you know, when I finished, they left. Next day, the same thing. Next day, the same thing. And um, and I remember on the 26th of June, so this went on for a few days, uh, uh, three, a few weeks. And um, on the 26th of June, the uh, there was only four of these birds sitting on the fence. And I'm like, well, what, what in the world? And <laughs> there was only four of them. Uh, I'm going to wind down here. Uh, and then mom... The mom bird just screams. The fifth one comes up. On the 30th of June, the five birds are there. Now, remember, they were there every day for an entire month. On the 30th of June, um, crust came over, like was breaking apart off of my body and, and running down. And honey and oil, I felt it physically coming on me. I, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't there, but it was just kind of like it felt physical. And it come over my body and overwhelm me. From that point on, I was able to comprehend what I was reading from other books. The Bible I had no problem with, but the, the, the other books. And I share this story to let you know that there's so much that, that Resurrection Weekend means to me because of what Jesus did for me and throughout my life. And I know where I'm going. I know that I have a lot of work to do yet. Um, but I also know that revival is coming and people are going to be born again and you're going to get to see it. There's going to be at least two billion souls in this last revival that are going to come and they are going to be um, an influx into the church, into the body of Christ. And it's not just a specific religion because I believe that every generation is going to be involved in this revival. Every uh, gender, both genders are going to be involved in this revival. Women preachers, women evangelists, men evangelists, men preachers, pastors, teachers, all of them are going to be a part. Every generation, every denomination, all the denominational walls are going to be broken. And the church will once again, the body of Christ is going to once again be in unity. And I'm looking forward to that. And so as we draw the, this thing to a close, I want to tell you that you're going to make it. I've been born again. This is my 51st year. You're going to make it. I remember 
uh, people would say, well, the thing about Billy Graham is that people, you know, would, would die off pretty quickly. The Jesus revolution, many people, you know, I, I know too many people that have made it through the Jesus revolution. 50 plus years says a lot. I've been, I've seen a lot. But the thing that has impressed me the most is drawing closer to Jesus and getting deeper and deeper and deeper with him. Not looking to the right or to the left, but just being deeper and deeper and deeper with him. God loves you, man. Take the word. Take the word and go for it. Don't look back. This is your moment. If God is telling you to go to a nation or to uh, speak to a nation, go do it. If he's telling you to, to sing publicly, do it. If he's telling you to just share the gospel, do it. I, I got these little wristbands that say, seek God's kingdom. I'll show it to you. Um, it just says, seek God's kingdom. All right. And then so I give these out to anybody that I share with. So that they have a touch thing where it, um, you know, they look at it and they see it and they remember what God had spoken to. Or they remember the healing. They remember these things. Anyway, that's all that we're going to do today. Um, I just want you to enjoy your weekend. I want to en- want you to enjoy tomorrow and, and Resurrection Sunday. Just remember Bring to your mind, bring to your heart uh, what Jesus did on that day. He didn't stay dead. Uh, there's a man by the name of S.M. Lockridge. He had a sermon that said it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. Listen to that message. And just understand that the resurrection of your dreams, the resurrection of your friends, the resurrection life that Jesus gives is for you and it's for today and it's for everything that you go for. So go for it. Don't look back. Trust God and let him let him fill you with his love. Anyway, that's all we're going to do today. Tom and Sarah at Outlook.com is how to get a hold of me. Uh, if you want to invest in my schooling, Tom and Sarah at Outlook.com. Uh, I'll send you the Cash App links, the Venmo or the um, or the or the PayPal or even the uh, Zelle links, so you can give into that, and then um, and then just go from there and just watch what God does for you. Um, I believe that I'm supposed to have some people invest, and then just see it. I'm also writing a few books at the moment, and uh, and so uh, I'm kind of excited. One of them is actually about revival, uh, how to maintain and sustain a revival. Um, another book I'm writing is, uh, is, is a sequel to, uh, to my devotional on the Song of Solomon. Um, and so, you know, we have all of these things. Anyway, God bless you guys. Uh, starting Monday, we're going to go into, I think it's the book of James. Uh, and then we're going to go into this and we're going to see it. Well, God bless you. Have a great day. Enjoy your weekend. And we'll see you on Monday.